Welcome to Legit Street Cars and welcome to another Rolls-Royce DIY video. Today, I'm gonna show you guys how to rebuild both of your brake master cylinders and how to remove the seats out of your 1961 Silver Cloud II Rolls-Royce because as one of the most common cars on the road today, this is something that all of you absolutely need to know how to do. Now, I know most of you daily drive your own 62-year-old Rolls-Royce, so don't even bother watching other highly detailed DIY videos on rare exotic cars like a Honda Civic, a Ford F-150, or a Toyota Camry, cars that you would never realistically consider buying. So sit back, relax, warm yourself up some Earl shot Earl Grey tea and some crumpets and enjoy the show. Cheerio. Here is the issue with the brake. So we have a massive brake fluid leak from one of the two master cylinders. So right now I want to determine for sure which one it's coming from. It looks like the bottom one, but it could simply be the upper master cylinder that's leaking on this. So we're going to clean this up, pump up the brakes and see what we can see. A little brake cleaner. And look at that, it's fixed, done. All right, so I have my friend Peter in the car. Go ahead, Peter, whenever you're ready, let's pump some brakes. Let me show you guys everything that's going on here. We have linkage there, it goes all the way over here, over here, over there, linkage all the way up there. It's moving this little servo thing on the transmission, and then finally leading over here. This is nuts. And I forgot, I could totally do this myself down here so we can pump up both of these. And now that this is clean, we can find the leak so we know for sure which one of these master cylinders is leaking. It might help if we pull these boots back too. All right, so let's remove this boot here. Okay. <laughs> I'd say that's a good sign, but it could still just be the fluid from the upper master cylinder but oh you can see there's oh whatever that is is loose there's something right there it's just dangling around okay so a much easier way of figuring this out is simply by removing the feed hose from each brake master cylinder and seeing which reservoir goes bone dry so i know up top which one leaks out within a couple days that's our culprit so i'm going to start with this bottom hose and if that empties out the reservoir completely that I know is already low from leaking brake fluid, then we know it's this bottom one. Hose clamp looks pretty new, actually. You getting anything? This thing's pretty low to begin with. This might be it. So of course this Rolls Royce is not gonna make life easy for us. It is the upper master cylinder that's leaking. So looks like we have to remove the lower one along with it and a lot of linkage. So let's get to it. All right, so I got this bottom linkage out. We're gonna try and slide these things out through the bottom. There's that. Okay, so I figured it out. This C-clip right here, it actually holds this rod in the master cylinder. I can see the upper one, it's intact. So we'll see if we can get this back on. It's definitely the upper master cylinder that's leaking. This thing is leaking live on us right now, just dripping out. So that's a good thing because I had already ordered the rebuild kit for the upper master cylinder many, many months ago when I bought this car in South Carolina. I remember we were thinking it was the upper one. We weren't 100% sure and I just ordered it um, and that's the case. And this is it, this is the entire rebuild kit you're looking at right now, $125. Can you believe that? Just for a few seals. All right, with that, everything is disconnected, but I think we're gonna need to spread these plates out a little bit more. Doesn't seem to be enough room to get this guy through. All right, yes, I did it. All right, cool. I was able to leave those plates alone and here she is. Okay, so this is what they give you in the rebuild kit. And I'm not gonna lie, I'm a little worried that I'm gonna need a little bit more than that, but uh, we're gonna find out right now. So it looks like the only way really to access the guts of this is to remove this gigantic cap. And it does look like there is an aluminum washer in here that hopefully I can reuse. I'm not gonna mess with these because I don't have new washers, but it wasn't leaking from here it was leaking from here. And you can see the fluid here has gathered at the bottom. And it was pretty obvious when we were pumping it up in the car that it was leaking out from here. So uh, anyway, wish me luck, here we go. Well, this is a little embarrassing. I don't have the proper size wrench to fit over this. I think it's like a 38 or a 48 millimeter. 
Uh, so I will be using some locking pliers and I'm using a vise, a hundred year old vise built in Chicago that's not even bolted down to the table yet because I was gonna restore it. Um, but yeah, we're working uh, with whatever we have and hopefully this is not really tight. So I'm gonna hold the vise over here. Okay, seriously? Wow, I could have done that by hand. Are you, wow, that is not tight at all. <laughs> Sweet, that's great. Oh man, did we just get lucky. You guys know I never get lucky with stuff that is corroded. It's always stuck. I always have to use heat, a drill, violence to get it to come apart. And this just came apart, so I'll take it. All right, so let's see what we have inside of a 60 something year old Rolls Royce master cylinder. Okay, yep, there's fluid. <laughs> All right, we have a spring and a plastic sleeve and fluid. Lots and lots of fluid. It's making my vice look pretty good though. All right, we'll clean this stuff up a little bit. All right. Get this guy out of our 100 year old vice and see what we're working with here. You've seen it here on Legit Street Cars. First, remember this moment in your life. Remember where you are right now. This is the inside of a Rolls Royce master cylinder. Kind of boring. All right, so I'm assuming we need to push this part in and that there's a seal in here that's leaking the fluid out. So when you hit the brake pedal, this gets pushed in and sends the fluid through your brake line to the wheel cylinders. So we should be able to, okay, we can't do it by hand. There we go. Ah, oh, perfect. Ha ha, excellent. This has gotta be it. This has gotta be the entire problem right here is this seal isn't sealing properly. So the fluid is going right past it and exiting the vehicle. So let's go see if we have these, hopefully we do. And they don't seem to be in the worst condition. I was expecting these to be rock hard, but, uh, but they're not. Now I will say the cylinder in which that piston rides, it's a little scuffed up. It's not as smooth as I'd imagined. Um, so I'll try and clean this up a little bit inside. Hopefully that's not the issue. In that case, we might need a whole new master cylinder. Well, I'm hoping this is some kind of updated seal. It's the only one that would remotely fit in this area. Not sure where I might've just gotten the wrong seals. So let's be gentle with this. Not that we're gonna reuse it anyway because it wasn't sealing. Okay, I'll slide this guy right off. Yeah, I don't know if I have anything that looks quite like this. Well, here's that one I had in the kit. As you can see, this is definitely not going to work. And this is the old one. These are the two other seals that I have. Neither one of them is remotely close. Awesome. All right, so like you guys were probably thinking, I got the rebuild kit for the smaller master cylinder. No big deal. I'm going to rebuild this one while we wait for the other parts. And I was told one of these master cylinders was rebuilt not too long ago. I'm gonna go ahead and assume it was the smaller guy but I'm just gonna do it again. That way we've sealed up both master cylinders. We know for sure everything's gonna function properly. So here is some nasty fluid for you right there. I can definitely tell from the fluid, this is the one that wasn't leaking because I kept on needing to add fluid to the other reservoir. Yeah, let's just go ahead and push on this piston a little bit. There we go. Just give it a light tap, it'll pop out. There's that. All right, and here we go. This is the old seal. This is the new seal. This looks much better. So we definitely have the right parts for the smaller master cylinder. All right, so first things first, we're gonna remove the old seal from the piston. Slippery little fella here. And we'll just do one of these guys. Okay, so we are gonna be replacing this seal. I just wanted to show you, this is a pretty cool tool here. This is specifically made for removing seals. So instead of using a sharp pick that will definitely destroy the seal, you can use one of these. This is mostly helpful when you wanna reuse a seal, we're gonna replace it, but it's a nice tool. Nonetheless, it kind of slips in there very nicely and removes the seal without destroying it. We'll clean this up with some brake clean. And we're also gonna wet sand the cylinder. So just a little bit of soapy water. And this is 2000 grit sandpaper. You wanna use a very fine sandpaper, some emery cloth would work well in this situation. But basically we wanna get this to shine, but we don't wanna remove any material. So I'm just gonna be really gentle, use a lot of water. It helps to use what looks to be your grandma's pillowcase from 1956 as well. That way you catch 
all of the dirt and debris. And you can see here, this is just a nice, smooth, shiny surface now. Finish it off with some more brake clean. And right now I'm just cleaning up some gunk that I found underneath where that seal used to sit. So before we install the new seal, I'm gonna clean this up as well. Now I'm gonna cut out a strip of sandpaper and you've seen it here first. We're using tin strips on a piece of sandpaper because I don't have any scissors. Spray this guy down too. Okay, then I just cut this down a little more and we're going to wrap it around just kind of clean up this surface where the seal sits. Basically want everything super clean. All right, after using the sandpaper, this is what we have. You can see a little bit of pitting right at the top there, um, but that's not gonna make any difference. We got the vast majority of this area nice, smooth, and clean. The rubber seal's going in this groove. We really just need it to seal on the outside. The rubber to the inside of the cylinder is what's important for the brake fluid not leaking out. So right now this guy is ready to go. Okay, before we install our new seal, I'm just gonna lubricate it in brake fluid. So I'm not gonna use any other lubricants or anything in this braking system outside of DOT3 brake fluid, non-synthetic, that's what we're gonna be using. So this seal is a little difficult to get on. So we wanna be gentle, definitely don't use a pick anywhere near the new one or you can damage it. All right, there we have it, our new seal on the piston. So now we have to clean out the cylinder here. As you can see, there's a lot of dirt and debris. This is stuff that was on the outside and when we took the piston out, it kind of crept in. So we want this thing to be spotless before that piston goes back in. So I'm using the pick here on the outside, but definitely don't use this on the inside and scratch up that cylinder. You wanna be very gentle when you're cleaning this. Okay, so without having a hone or anything like that, I think I've gotten this pretty clean. The cylinder is very nice and shiny. There's no dirt or debris. And I've blown this out and sprayed it out with Brake Clean quite a few times. So I think we are ready to go back together. Okay, so at this point, we're just going to go ahead and slide this piston back in. Just like that. Now there is a little washer here that fits in before our second seal. So make sure this hasn't fallen out. And now we're just going to install this guy and make sure that it's seated all the way around. And the last seal we have is for the cap. Remove this O-ring, slide on the new one, and then we can install our spring inside of the piston like that. And then this plastic little sleeve right here just fits right into the groove of the seal that you installed. So it kind of holds itself there. And then finally we can install this cap right here. So the rubber seal is gonna seal the fluid out. This is not a crush washer or anything that needs to be replaced. And now we're just gonna go ahead and tighten this up. Wasn't that tight to begin with, so I think we're good there. All right, FedEx just knocked on the door and we have our rebuild kit. Now, one of these kits came with some red rubber grease and the other one didn't. So I'm gonna go ahead and use some of this grease in here, but if you don't have it, um, I would just use brake fluid. I think that works fine. So we'll just put a little bit of this on here, and I'm not using a lot of this stuff, so we'll work it in. And I cleaned up this piston just in the same way. It's looking really nice, so we'll go ahead and slide on our seal. There we go. I cleaned up the cylinder as well. You can see a little bit of light scoring, but it is perfectly smooth in there, and I ran a little bit of the 2000 grit sandpaper with water as well. And I think this is about as good of a sealing surface as we're gonna get. All right, so you guys are professional Rolls-Royce Master Cylinder Rebuilders. We're just gonna slide the piston in like that. Don't forget your washer. This thing is identical, just slightly bigger. And then we'll pop this guy in, remove this bad boy. Install our new O-ring on the cap and screw said cap into the master cylinder. Of course, we have our spring inside of here as well. That is a piston return spring. So after you push this in, and it pushes fluid out to apply the brakes, it'll pop right back out. It's crazy to think that the Rolls-Royce didn't come out until 40 years after this vice was sold. And this vice is over 100 years old and it was made right here in Chicago. Okay, next up, we're going to bench bleed these master cylinders using a specialty Rolls-Royce tool that I just created. And all it is is a funnel and a red rubber tube. So. We're gonna connect this tube here. This is where the fluid from the reservoir comes from. And then we're simply going to dump some brake fluid in here. And as you can see here, it's already starting to fill up. So we're gonna fill up the master cylinder. And if you guys went to college, you know the science behind 
raising the funnel high up into the air to get the fluid to go down quicker. So that's what I'm doing right now. And we've almost gotten all the bubbles out. So we are full and then, woo! <laughs> if we press the piston in, it will shoot out. Normally when you're doing this, you would connect these two into a loop so you can bleed this out, but I don't have any fittings for that right now. So we're just gonna make a little bit of a mess in the name of saving time later. So I'll go kind of slow. There we go. Now we're just gonna go ahead and draw in the fluid from the funnel. Now, when we go to install this, we're gonna make a little bit of a mess. It's not gonna be absolutely perfect, but this bleeding, this prime, if you will, of the master cylinder will save us a little bit of time not dealing with air bubbles. Now, oddly enough, the rebuild kit does not come with these two copper seal rings and they weren't leaking. So I'm not gonna go on a wild goose hunt or wild goose chase. I don't really know which one it is. Um, but I'm not going to go around hunting and wasting time for these um, when they're not leaking. I think they're going to be just fine. So you can see here that even with a bench bled master, you got to really tilt it to get fluid out of here. So this is about the wildest angle I'll have this at during the installation. So even though we don't have caps, we should be good. And then I'll just clean it all up once everything's installed. Okay, so we got to fit this guy in here. And let's see if I can just muscle it in. Oh, I got it. All right, not bad. So even with the master cylinder filled with fluid, we didn't lose any at all. I've already connected that line and that hose also. And now we can go ahead and try and sneak those bolts in. All right, so now we can sneak this guy back in. Okay. And bolt number two, that's the easy one. All right, perfect. So before we install the lower master, we have to install this little clip here that's gonna hold on our linkage. So when we press the pedal, it activates the master cylinder. And this wasn't too bad to remove, but I have a feeling, like a lot of things, it's gonna be difficult to reinstall. This is impossible. Nothing's impossible. Okay, there we go. I need an assist from the flat blade screwdriver. Pushing it in, I think it needs to click. In. Yes, clicks. Clicks are the best. Take that Rolls Royce clip. You are in. Oh, wait a minute. No, you're not. Hold on a second. I'm glad I film all this stuff. This is not in. Hang on. There we go. <laughs> glad I filmed these videos, all right? I got to get you guys up close to check on my work. And in this case, that helped me out. So now our C-clip is all the way in and properly secured. Okay, now it's time to install the little guy, the one that wasn't leaking, but we rebuilt anyway. And this one is much easier. If you're gonna have one of these leak on you, you definitely want it to be this lower one. Very easy job. I'm gonna go ahead and screw in the brake line now before we hard mount it. That way, if we need to manipulate it, we can get it at the right angle so we don't cross thread anything. So we got the line and hose to the bottom one installed. So we'll go ahead and install these bolts too. And I have not tightened up the top bolts yet either. That way we can slide this guy in, it kind of spreads this out. Okay, I just had to get another specialty Rolls-Royce tool. Uh, so this is the official brake linkage holding tool right here. And uh, what it's doing here, it's pushing this rod into the master cylinder and holding it there so we can get our clip on. So um, I'll leave a link to this. These are about $400 from Rolls-Royce. And just make sure the gap on them is set properly in order to uh, hold the linkage against the frame. There we go. And we'll just slip our boot on like so. And we're gonna remove our special tool. Only the finest Rolls Royce shops in the world have these guys. All right, then we can go ahead and tighten up our nuts and bolts that hold the master cylinder in. And this is a little trick for you. We have the ratcheting wrench on the nut on the inside. There's no room to turn that. And on this side, there's no room to put the ratcheting head. That's okay. They'll still accomplish the exact same thing. We're still holding the nut on the other side and we're kind of like using this as the ratcheting end. So see, we got the ratcheting wrench over on this side, normal open end on this side. Another trick for you is if you can fit it, just get yourself some power tools. There we go. That's what I'm talking about. Okay, and before I connect the linkage, I'm gonna go ahead and fill this with fluid now. You guys know what fluid going into a reservoir probably looks like. So just gonna 
I'm blocking you. I'm blocking you out. Okay. Yeah, you're missing me spill stuff. Uh, let's go ahead and pretend that I'm not getting this all over the exhaust manifold. And that I have really good aim. Yeah, this will smell good. There we go. Okay. This is the smart way to do it. Let's see. Okay, still spilled some. Okay. All right, cool. We did it. No super old single stage paint was harmed in the filling of these master cylinders. Horrible job. Just absolutely horrid. With both reservoirs filled, we are going to bleed the brake. So just like any car, you want to start at the wheel furthest away from the master cylinder and brake reservoir. But hang on a second. Most of them are under the hood. So is that the furthest? Yeah. I'd say this is still the furthest one away. <laughs> so we're going to start right here and I'm just using my pneumatic bleeder. Okay, so I've gotten a lot of fluid out with a pneumatic bleeder, but I just want to be sure 100% that we don't have any air bubbles. And what's nice is you don't need a guy in the car. You could have a second guy just simply pushing the brake lever like so. So I have Peter, he's a fine English gentleman, right? Hello, yes. Hello, cheerio. And oh, um, yeah, he's gonna be my my brake applicator guy. You are 100% English. Oh, yes. Right, okay. No one else can work on this. 1,000%. Yeah, all right, 1,000. All right, so right now the bleeder is closed, so I'm going to open the bleeder now. All right, go ahead and push. Okay, and then I'll close it, and then he'll go back. So he can't go back until I'm all the way closed, otherwise we're just gonna suck air right back in. So I'm closed right now, so I'm gonna go ahead and open. Go ahead. All the way down. Okay, it's coming, it's coming. And we'll close. The important part here is we don't have any air bubbles. This is a really good sealing hose right here. A lot of it is just dripping down the bottom of the hose, so you don't necessarily see it on camera, but fluid is definitely moving. Let's do one more for good measure. Open. Down. There we go. Yeah, you guys can probably see that. Nice. Okay, closed, and we're good here. Okay, with the brakes bled out, we can reinstall our linkage. So we're connecting our foot to the actual brakes now. And let's see here. There we go. And then we just have to do that again on the bottom. Like so. And we'll tighten this up too. Nuts on the back. We'll tighten these up. We're almost done. We'll just tighten these guys up. Okay, next up we have the e-brake or parking brake, if you will. And just requires this guy, this guy, and a cotter pin. And then I will bend this with my bare hands. There we go. All right, next up, we got to get this spring. So it just goes there and right there. All right, there you have it. The master cylinders are installed. The brakes are bled. Everything is looking good. All right, let's see how this brake pedal feels. This thing fires up real easy. Runs great. Oh yeah, this is so nice now. It actually has a little bit of resistance. So normally I'd take a car out for a test drive after fixing the brakes, but it is snowy and salty outside. I had to drive my 335i for just two days in this weather and just look at it. And the Rolls Royce is from the South. From what I understand, it's lived in the South its entire life. It's probably never seen snow or salt or anything. It looks pretty nice underneath there. Uh, so I don't wanna start introducing it to this mess anytime soon. And yes, there are many gallons of water on top of my 335i and my 540i. That will be explained in a video in about two days, three days. Don't worry, it's, it'll all make sense soon. And yes, these cars are all lined up for a bath. All right, now that the Rolls Royce has brakes, it's time to tackle the interior. I'm so excited for this. We have the leather guy coming to pick up these seats in a little bit, so I need to have these out for him. And I'm excited to take a look at the true condition of the carpet under the seats as well, because these original carpets are like $5,000. And although they're kind of dirty, I think we can salvage these. Let me put it this way. I'm going to do whatever it takes to salvage these because I'm not buying new ones. I don't think it's necessary. I mean, they're intact, they're just dirty. So anyway, Let's figure out how we get 61 Rolls Royce seats out. All right, so we're gonna attack the rears first. I believe these are gonna be the most difficult. Okay, and let's get this expensive carpeting out of here first. It seems to just snap into place. Look at that, that's nice. Okay. 
kind of excited to see what we find underneath here. So far, it's just a lot of nice padding. I'm not sure if this is factory or not, but there's a couple layers. Seems pretty comfortable. Seems a little newer though too. I don't know, someone might've added that. And then this has, as you guys have noticed, it has a stereo out of like a 2000 Ford Mustang or any Ford product, a Windstar, whatever, of the 90s and early 2000s. So they do have some speaker wire going through to the back. That radio doesn't even work though. And then this door does not open. It's the only door that doesn't open, unfortunately. I think we gotta figure this out. Probably sooner than later, it's gonna make this very difficult to do. All right, hang on. I think this might actually just push up. Oh, that'd be beautiful. I don't have to mess with the carpet right now. <laughs> yes. Rolls Royce, you're the best. This is so nice. It's like a newer car where the seats just pop up. I just assumed this was gonna get held in, you know, by like 14 stainless steel screws or something fancy, but okay. There you go. Pretty easy. And so some people commented in the videos that they used to use horsehair for the cushion on these seats. No, I don't know. I don't know about that, but there are a lot of springs. I'll tell you that much. Look at these springs in here. This is as comfortable as it seems, guys. You just kind of sink in. It's pretty cool. All right, so let's see. What are we gonna discover here? Yes, money. This is not Rolls Royce money though. 50 cents, we're expecting to find like loose hundreds from whoever was rolling around back here being chauffeured around. No good. Look, we even have little wire clippings from when they did the stereo. <sighs> All right, well, turning a profit already here. All right, so I'm hoping that this follows the same theme as the bottom. Okay. Okay, I think it does. I'm secretly looking out for a jar of Grey Poupon. There's gotta be Grey Poupon back here. If you have a Rolls Royce like this and you're not eating sandwiches with Grey Poupon on it, there's something seriously wrong with you. It was literally the first thing me and my kids did when this showed up at my house in Chicago <laughs> is I pulled out the little trays here for them and uh, we had a sandwich with Grey Poupon. They love the commercials. And this is now called the Grey Poupon Mobile according to my little kids. All right, so we gotta get all the junk out of the trunk. I got my first interior battle wound here. Got cut. Hopefully this car is clean. I don't know if I showed you this in the reveal video, but this car came with what I believe to be the hat of whoever bought this thing new. I don't know, but it's mine now. And once this thing's all fixed up, I'm driving it with this hat. It might be the only way I drive this car. All right, so I gotta remove our 90s six disc CD changer. It doesn't work by the way. I kind of want this to work though. I want to rock some CDs in the rolls. You know what? I didn't check to see what CDs are in this thing. Oh no, I just killed power to it, although it never worked to begin with. We gotta figure this out. We gotta get these CDs out. But first things first, back seat. I think there are fasteners from the back that are holding the top of that back seat in. We're gonna find out. Is this a factory rolls partition? I think it's just made of cardboard. Whoa, what is this weird? Wait, what is going on in here? There's like a knob in here and this big box. And obviously they cut a hole in this for a reason. So you can access it. Oh, this is the the air conditioning system. It's got, yeah, it's got big vents coming up, but uh, but what do you control back here? What, what do you need to pop the trunk to control? I have no clue. All right, 50 cents and an old rag and a rubber band. I mean, I'm striking out here, guys, I'm striking out. This guy needs to be reconnected, so we'll do that while we're in here. But uh, yeah, rear AC. Uh, this one might be a little harder to do. But... Okay, so I believe that this screw is holding the rear seat in, and there's another on the other side that I've already taken out. Hopefully this is it, and unfortunately this kind of came apart. It's already been duct taped a few times, so. You can see the aftermarket speakers and the quartz. Do we know much about speakers? Are those any good? Sounds good. I'm a Rolls-Royce expert here, people. 
Rolls Royce expert. Look at that. Nice. This is coming apart a lot easier than I thought. I'm not going to lie. All right. So in case you guys are working on your own Silver Cloud 2 at home, it's just two bolts on the top. That's it. And this is weird. Look at the color here. This is very odd. For some reason, that doesn't seem period correct to me, but I could be wrong. And this is wood. Yeah, this is real wood. So cool. Okay. All right, still haven't found any gold or money, which is a little disappointing. Um, but I have a feeling I know how these little side pieces come out. There's probably a couple more bolts in the trunk that are a pain to get to. So we'll, uh, we'll see what we got in the trunk again. All right. That's okay, there we go. That's our screw right there. Oh, there might be more than one. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so with the two out, yep. This guy pulls right out, nice and easy. Sweet. And there's gotta be another one somewhere, maybe coming from the wheel well to get this out too. Okay, so I got the two out for this one as well. Okay, there's that. So that one had three of them. One, two, three, holding it in. Yeah, that's it. And then, wow, I'm hoping this is it. A couple Phillips here on this bracket, maybe holding this guy in, that'd be great. But I have a sneaky suspicion there might be some more fasteners on this side, which is kind of going to be tough to get to. All right, so this side's only got one. Don't think there's any way this is it. That'd be awesome, but no. There's something else holding this guy in. Oh, look at that. There is another flathead right here. And there is a dead spider right next to it. Hey, buddy. How old are you? Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, this is horrible. This is horrible. Okay. Yeah. Are you from Are you from England? You know the guys that did the Ford Windstar stereo had this out. So it's being held in right here. There's a straight up nail here going into wood. I think that's just to hold the leather in, but... It would be hilarious if this thing was nailed in. There it is, right there. Oh, that's my finger. <laughs> there are nuts right there that are holding this in. We can get to without removing the wheel, which is great. All right, I got that one out. Oh, this guy is almost out. Wow. So far, we've taken five fasteners off to try and get this out, and it's still not coming. This is crazy. Oh, here. Hold on a second. Okay, there we go. All right, there's some more wires for the stereo. There you go. <laughs> nice, we got that out. This is what they use to reduce noise, road noise. There's a lot of this padding all over the place and it's glued in here and it's still in really good shape. It's all over the place. There, you can kind of see behind the glue there. It came undone in this area. And I see a little piece of styrofoam there. Oh, there's a big piece of styrofoam right under here. We'll leave that alone. All right, I'm gonna try this side. It's welded on the bottom, just a nut that's welded. Oh, this one just, just turns. The other one, we can't turn at all. And this one is barely tight. Yeah, it's, it's at a weird angle too with this seat here. All right, luckily I have a super long flathead. Seems like this was developed in conjunction with Rolls-Royce to remove these seat screws. These screwdrivers don't even like fit in here really. I don't know if they're too fat or this thing's too narrow. There we go, and yeah. That's literally all it is. There's four of these that hold this gigantic seat in. It's so weird. Oh man, this is a little nerve wracking. We don't want this to break because the other end is welded on the bottom. So it's not just like a nut we can easily replace. You can do it, Peter. I have faith. And if you guys don't recognize Peter, he is who connected me with Kamar in the Lexus giveaway. And we've become friends working on cars together and he's helped me today. And hopefully not breaking the bolt on my 61 Rolls Royce. <laughs> oh, it's getting harder. It's getting harder now? Yeah. Shoot. Look how easy these are. Look at that. These just slide right out. No tools required. So we've got some penetrating oil on there, and he's just working it back and forth. That tool is pretty nice, isn't it? <laughs> this really allows you to get some good leverage. Oh, there it is. Yeah, nice. Time Ooh. and penetrating oil. That's all we needed. Good job, dude. Um, yes. Yes. All right, cool. Now let's uh, let's hold this down and we'll... Whoa, it's right. It springs right forward with that lever. And we just have a couple more back here. A little quarter drive ratchet with a flathead bit. 
coming right out. I've got the same deal going on over here, and these little Sonic ratchets are a lifesaver, let me tell you. All right, so we have all four bolts out. And I think that's it. I mean, we know there's there's no electrical connectors or anything. We just got to somehow figure out how this is going to exit here, or do we do it in the rear? I don't know. Rolls-Royce front seat coming out. out it's out we did it <laughs> carpet looks really nice doesn't it yeah oh what's this an old receipt oh, that's oh really no cool. way get out of here what is this this is one of those like oh yeah card machines yeah this is an old credit card machine so i guess it can't be 66 no it's weird it says 6 11 66 but isn't this one of those old credit card things it's got i don't know clifford b snyder that's exactly what your name has to be when you drive a car like this and it's for description it says boron extron duron premex three months i don't know what this is guys thanks come again thanks come back again soho store all right we gotta do some research what is this what is this what else is in here so here's what the receipt looks like kind of cool um, I'm 37 years old and I don't know what year this is from. So if you're going to comment that Alex, you don't know what Soho is or all these other products on here, please list your age down below. Okay. I'm just telling you my real life experience is I don't have the answers to what any of this means in my own brain. And so with that, I hope you guys will all join me for another installment of must know DIY how to Rolls Royce videos. Some more are coming very soon. So if you haven't already, give this video a big thumbs up, share the video, subscribe if you haven't already, and most importantly, have an excellent day. I'll catch all of you in the next video.